All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Before I get started, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechak Radash, double honors to my apostles and my elders of great millstone who lead, teach, and rule well. Loving honors by fellow Akim, pushing the word in true faith and sincerity across the four corners. Shalom, peace and blessings to the sincere listeners who listen and subscribe to the men and doctrine of great millstone. This is the brother you died from Jesus Atlanta Church. Come with another lesson to the spirit. And it's going to be going into um, some uh, some some breaking news, man. Um, going into uh, just reading the title of the article: Argentina's Senate approves historic bill to legalize abortion. And um, as you can see here, there's a group of uh, women who it looks like are uh, protesting and celebrating in the street. And man, it's just. Um, Another sign, another token that um, that we're close to the end of this thing, man. You know, so I'm um, gonna get right to the article. Uh, this is uh, it says Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, apparently, their CNN branch. This is from CNN.com. Argentina's Senate approved a bill to legalize abortion Wednesday, in a, in in a it should be a in a historic vote. Seen as a major victory for abortion rights advocates in the Catholic majority country, and of course, um, Catholicism isn't the true way to the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father's true name being Yahweh, and the Messiah, you know, the Messiah's true name being Yahweh Shai. You know, Catholicism isn't the true way, um, you know, to please the Heavenly Father and the Messiah. Um, you know, but. One thing, you know, just in a overall sense or manner, um, you know, Catholicism, it, Catholicism, at least it stands on portions of the Bible. You know, like I said, it's not the true way, the true path, but this just goes to show and symbolize that, um, you know, Jake, because the Argentinians, uh, uh, that's one. That's one uh, place, one land, in which um, uh, it, the nation, the, the nation of Israel, will be prophesied to be driven to. Um, but just goes to show you that Jake is getting further and further away from uh, the the spiritual aspect of the scriptures, man. Okay, um, even though Catholicism is not the way. I'm to say that one more time, just to make that clear. Uh, continuing on, the Senate voted 38 to 29 to give millions of women access to legal terminations under a new law supported by President Alberto Fernandez. The majority was expected to be much sp smaller. So the Senate voting 38 to 29, uh, the expectation was it to be a lot close to be more to be closer than um, what it resulted. But even with that, man, you think about the terminology of this. Um, to give millions of women access to legal terminations, man. You got to think about this, man. They're talking about, you know, well, sh they're legalizing, um, you know, murder, man, just killing, uh, um, developing spirits inside the womb, you know. Massive crowds of abortion rights activists and anti-abortion campaigners gathered outside the palace of the Argentine National Congress to await the results which came in the early hours of the morning after an overnight debate. Supporters of the bill greeted the news with loud cheers and in some cases, tears of joy. So you got people, but major, majorly women who want this, want access to uh, abortion so bad that, you know, they'll be pro they protesting uh, throughout an overnight cheering this bill being passed and even crying, you know, shedding tears for the ability to, um, you know, pretty much kill um, developing babies in the womb, man. All right. Gabriella Gio Comelli, whose two sisters had illegal abortions, called the scene very emotional. My question is, why are your two sisters having abortions, man? You know what I'm saying? Why are your two sisters having abortions? 
goes to show you that um, the w- women in women today and our women, they're whores, man. They're whores, man. All right. We have been fighting for years. Gia Comelli said, I see young people now, though I hope they never have to abort. But if they do, now they can do it safely. So, and, and you know, and that's um that's double speak, man. You know what I'm saying? That's double speak because if if you were of the mindset and mentality of not wanting, um, you know, women to abort their their uh, developing children, you wouldn't be out here celebrating this uh, legislation going through, man. Um. So I'm, now I'm going to kind of skip through the article, jump down. Uh, the law will legalize abortion in all cases up to 14 weeks of pregnancy. So in Argentina, now they'll be able to abort up to three and a half months. Abortion in Argentina is South America's third most populous country. It's currently only permitted when the pregnancy results from rape or endangers the life or health of the woman. So now... Um, abortion is a, a well. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is speaking to the law now or the law as it's transitioning. So I'm going to just not even speak towards that. Um, in all other circumstances, abortion is illegal and punishable by up to 15 years in jail. Uh, abortion advocates hope Argentina's decision will spur similar movements in Latin America's other Catholic majority states. So they're hoping that this spreads. And like I said, this is a sign and a token that we're at the end, man. Um, I'm going to uh, read these paragraphs cause to make a point. Across Latin America and the Caribbean region, only Cuba, Uruguay, French Guyana, Guyana uh, or French, I think it's Guinea, or Guyana, 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 French Guyana, and Guyana allow for elective abortions, according to the Center for Reproductive Rights. In Mexico City and the Mexican state of Oaxaca, Abortions are also available on request, but are severely restricted throughout the rest of Mexico. By contrast, El Salvador, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Suriname ban abortions in nearly all circumstances. Colombia, Costa Rica, Guatemala, and Panama allow for abortions only if it's to preserve the woman's health or help save her life. And and I wanted to read this because, you know, these are a lot of areas in which... Um, the respective 12, 12 tribes uh, reside, you know, so Edom Esau, man, is, uh, you know, spreading his uh, manner of death and his desire to kill you Israelites, you know, right to your front doors, man. And you know, pretty much, you know, this is the point. But I'm gonna, you know, pick the meat from the bones. Uh, here, Brenda Austin, one of four congresswomen who introduced the the 2018 bill said she received Wednesday Wednesday's news with great emotion adding that the decision is a historic debt that our democracy owes to the rights of women and man see this is the turning of things upside down man you know and uh just like you know a brother was speaking upon in camp last week last uh Saturday uh the American way, so-called, and a democracy, it 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 is designed and protect, is designed and protects the really the people who shouldn't be having the rights, man. Okay, women's 
rights, so to speak, should be quite limited in the scope of, you know, the truth, man. Okay, because uh, first of all, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and the Lord and Messiah, Yahweh Shai, they're both men. They're about establishing a kingdom in which a kingdom was, was run by what? By a king. Yahweh Bashim Shai is about putting the man and men in the forefront, man. And the rest fall in order under that. But even Esau, with his democracy, with his wicked democracy, is uh about giving the 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 so-called downtrodden and forgotten rights but in the end, at the end of the day when he moves to establish his new world order his so-called new world order in which Yahweh will not allow him to fulfill he's gonna snatch them rights right from from your hands man and he's gonna uh institute uh or attempt to institute his desire which is a kingdom because this world is designed to be run by and governed by men and that's what you women and you uh uh beta Male simps don't understand, man. Is that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is about um, instituting and establishing a kingdom run, run by alpha men? And in, in in a sense, Edom Esau is trying to do the same thing, but on a left hand, wicked, demonic, uh, 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 fashion, man. In recent months, the abortion rights movement received a huge boost from the support of President Fernandez, who came to power last December. And you, man, you, you already know that uh, he's plugged in, man. To get plugged into uh, this government, the Argentine government, at this at this particular time, and to be moving in this particular form or fashion. Oh yeah, Esau got a hand on that. Esau got a hand on that. Um, just for edification and understanding, because I may have skipped it earlier. Wearing a green tie, a symbol of the abortion rights movement, Fernandez said criminalizing the procedure unfairly punishes vulnerable and poor women. See, it's the spirit. That's exactly what <laughs> the spirit is having me say, say, say. Adding that they were the greatest victims of Argentina's legal system. But... I wanted to read that because, um, you know, as you and as we see in this particular movement, um, these protesters and those who are celebrating that green, that green symbolizes uh, their for abortion rights. And um, that's the point, man. That's the point. So um, let's get into some scripts. This is Ecclesiasticus 25, read verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. See, Edom Esau knows that the best way to attack Israel, the 12 tribes, is through the woman. And the vast majority of the women of the vast majority of Israelite women are wicked, man. And their desire is to continue in and grow in their ability to, to, to be wicked. You see? So as we, um, you know, continue our journey, continue our walk, we have to always keep that in mind that not only are the masses and majority of these women wicked? And even the women who are with us, man, they have their moments where the wickedness just overtakes them. And of, you know, of course, we hope to work together to um, institute and um, implement more righteousness than wickedness, you know, within ourselves and ultimately, ultimately within our households. But even that, the portion of a sinner fall upon her so through their wickedness they're going to um receive the same judgments as the wicked I, ultimately as edom esau and i'm gonna jump down ecclesiastes 25 and 24 
Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. See, like I said, going back into the garden, Genesis, the third chapter, in which the snake, that serpent, approached the woman and 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 brought forth sin into our into our people, into our nation. It leads to to death, man. And here it is, twenty twenty. They are celebrating and, and fighting for and desiring a, a law that literally kills. This The law, this legislation, literally kills. Literally. And they're happy for it and they're in a, a celebratory um, mood for that legislation. You cannot make this stuff up. This is... The society and societies across the four corners in which we dwell in. And that's why we continue to do what we do as far as going to these articles, going to the news, going to prophecy, going to the scriptures, all through the spirit, power, mercy of Yahweh, Shemia, Mashiach, and the Holy Spirit to continue to condemn this place, man. Because at the end of the day, it ain't right, man. It's not right. And yet, and it's a uh, uh, it it can be a touchy subject, but even in the uh, scope of of rape, the scriptures even have or establish how to deal with that. You see, but this society is all jacked up, man. This world is all jacked up. <laughs> Revelation seventeen and one. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. See, so the um the great whore that sitteth upon many waters is America, Babylon the Great. And the many waters um, signify the, the people, okay? The people um, spread throughout the four, spread throughout the earth in which are represented by their governments. The waters representing the people, but ultimately what controls the people, what rules and regulates the people, what establishes the policy and polices the people are their governments, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. See, so these governments and the rulers of the earth who govern the waters of the people, they've committed fornication, man, because they've done things and they've pushed things that are completely just contrary and wrong pursuant to the scriptures. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Exhibit A. Drunk. Exhibit A, B, C, D, E, F. And so on and so forth behind them. They're drunk, man. They're drunk because they're in the, street, in the streets wearing green to symbolize abortion rights. Happy and celebrating that Edom Esau, the so-called white race, has given you the right to kill your children, man. What a sad, what a sad state of affairs we, we, we're in the midst of, man. Revelation 17 and 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemies, blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And that woman sitting upon the beast, as like I said, America. And the seven heads and ten horns go into pretty much the, the nations which um Established NATO and the EU, in which this this uh, this democracy, this um, way of ruling rulership, which is um, demonic, has spread through, um, has spread by the hand of the woman by America, which were given power from these. Um, Seed nations, like I said, that established NATO and the EU. 
Verse 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And that's what these legislations and these things are. They are the abominations and filthiness of her fornication that are within that golden cup. Even, even though it's golden on the outside, it looks beautiful and precious. What's inside is filthy, demonic, unprofitable, the, um, um, a, a medium of death. And that's what, and this legislation that's passed in Argentina, this is uh, an example of that filthiness and the abominations that are within that golden, that golden cup, man. Verse five. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And that's America. That is America, man. And like we said, even going into uh, Argentina and the government and these bills, the women bringing it up, the president backing it, that's because these governments, these kings, these people are drunk with the democracies, democracy, the policies, and the abominations of the so-called white white man, okay, with uh, Babylon the Great America at the forefront pushing all these things, man. So I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to finish out in Psalm 69. We're going to close out. I'm going to read relatively quickly. This is Psalm 69 and 18. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. And shoot, man, we got to, you know, we got to send up this prayer even for our, uh, for our unborn uh, brothers, sisters, and children, man. Because Edom Esau and the Israelite woman are, are, are aiming and um, desiring to Kill us off before we even get a chance to touch touch the earth, man. Thou hast known my reproach, verse 19. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. And this includes our women, in which is not a big surprise. We already read, um, brought out Sirach 25. We mentioned Genesis 3. We understand that those people, the people, um, who are drunk, include our women, because um, they're going to be the first ones to be drunk, you know, as far as being changed over from possibly being good and upright to being drunk. They're going to be the first ones, man. Verse 20. Come, verse 20. Reproach have broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there were, the, but there was none, and for comforts, but I found none. See, and this is why we continue, like I said, to um, not only do these lessons and bring out these this news and things that are going on, but we just continue to fight, man. Because when our Lord and our Messiah Yahweh Shai returns, we don't want to be in the spirit of of uh, not signing crime for uh, all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof, man. We want to be able to um, to to show um, to be shown to our to our Lord that we weren't with these things, man. We actively fought against these things, even if it was only with our voices. Verse twenty one. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. See, and this goes to show you that now Yahweh shot through the Spirit is. Is speaking, man. Okay, because um, this is what happened to Yahweh Shai. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Yeah, let their table and the things they, they write, their legislation, become a snare before them, and that which that and what should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. And also speaking of uh, the scriptures as well, man. Okay, because really these scriptures instruct us as a nation how to um 
how to live and govern and what we should and should not do. See, and it, it was designed to be for their good, but because they've abandoned it and they've pretty much accepted a, 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 another nation's legislation and law and writings to govern over them, it's going to become a trap unto them. Verse 23, let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually to shake. And yet these people of our nation, they can't see, man. They can't see. They've uh, been risen up to uh, everlasting darkness or, or continual darkness, I should say. It's like a continual darkness um, in this carnation, man, in this lifetime. Pour out thine indignation upon them and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. And that's what's going to happen. Yahweh Shemesh is going to pour out his anger upon the wicked men, including the wicked women and men of our nation. Let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents because in the same way that Yahweh Shemesh will save and deliver every um, Israelite that is written in the book of life, Yahweh Shemesh and we believe and we declare this pursuant to prophecy will also destroy every uh wicked uh uh israelite okay that was that is not written in the book of life for they persecute him whom thou hast smitten and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded see in jake okay israel or israelites who uh um who celebrate and and desire and and labor to push these uh, wicked laws and legislations, whether they know it or not, they're, they're continuously smiting Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book in which certain laws or the laws are pretty much in essence uh, um, a partial representation of Yahweh Shai. So when they're doing things in supporting legislations and movements and actions, that are a direct opposition of Yahweh Shai, or it's like it are a direct opposition of the law, then hey man, you pretty much continuously fighting against and smiting the Lord, man, the Messiah. And they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded because, you know, of course we, um, Lord willing, we're the saints, Lord willing, we are the elect, Lord willing, we are the 144,000, of course, um, we are not the Lord, but even with this man, it's like they Jake is continuously fighting against us because we're fighting for the Lord and the Heavenly Father, how about Shemal Shai in truth? Almost uh wrapped up. Verse Psalm 69, 27, add iniquity unto their iniquity and let them not come into thy righteousness. See, and that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. Yahweh Shai is allowing our people, okay, so-called Negro, Latinos, Native American, to add iniquity to iniquity. Their uh, um, transgre trans transgressions and iniquity uh, they're laden with, in, laden with iniquity. They're being superfluous in their iniquity. They're not even trying to seek and understand righteousness. Is the Most High is literally answering this, this, uh, uh, these scriptures right here, and let them not come into thy righteousness because they're not worthy of it. They're not even trying to do right by Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And wrapping up, man, Psalm sixty nine twenty eight. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous, the righteous. See, so there's there is a continual, continuous and continual separation of the righteous in which our righteousness as uh, is our is as filthy rags. We understand that, but we will be purified and made white spiritually through the blood of our, our Lord, Yahweh Shai. But for, for these people, man, they're not even, they are not going to be written in the book of life and they will not be found worthy of salvation with those who were made righteous through the sacrifice of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. And their just earnest desire to please the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai. So... <laughs>
I'm it off there. Lord willing, you were edified. Once again, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechakwadash, double honors to my apostles and my elders of great millstone who lead, teach, and rule well. Love and honor my fellow I can push the word in true faith and sincerity across the four corners. Shalom, Juan, peace and blessings to the sincere listeners who listen and subscribe to the Men and Doctrine Great Millstone. Until next time, Shalom. Juan.